Hello and welcome to another edition of My Southern Exposure. I should say episode because we are more than an edition. Every one of our shows is an episode on its own, that's for sure. Season number three, show number five. First thing I want to do is welcome the best co-host in the world, Rajina Ryan Singh. And also, by the way, today is Monday, February, oh goodness gracious, 22nd. Oh my I almost God. looked at I almost looked at the wrong one. And actually it's episode, I should say it's episode number six. I had some, I had my keyboard sitting on top and I looked at the wrong one. So it's September 26th, 2021, season three, episode number six. I apologize for everybody at home, but I was looking at the wrong week. So uh, I welcome Rajan Ryan Singh. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. I guess I have to send you the check in the mail because you just go on and on with the flattery, honey. I, you, you, know, you know what gets my juices running. <laughs> I, that's a metaphor. We're not talking, you know, for real. But I want to welcome, oh, I love the trans fan, honey. See, see, you all, I've trained them well. I've trained them well. <laughs> so I want to thank you all for tuning in again. We have a juicy show and we have a surprise. I'm not going to say it, but today is a special show and I'm so excited. I'll just say this, maybe I'll be in a sandwich, but let's, but that's all I'm going to say. So I'm really excited because today I just um, finished doing an interview with the Miami Herald. Uh, they wanted to do a piece on um, a transgender, multiracial woman of color. <laughs> well, they want to do a piece on transgender woman of color, but you know, I'm just like the United Nations here. So I had to put the multiracial in there, but uh, I, yeah, it was really good and, and um, had a great photo shoot. And they interviewed me and uh, yeah, really, really nice. Anytime I get to do these different things, um, I look at it as just another opportunity of uh, activism and advocacy. And, you know, cause I say me going to the grocery store is a statement of activism. You all know what I'm saying? That means that when you see me at the grocery store, you see a person that's living loud and proud as a transgender individual living my everyday life. So anyway, that's a whole uh, long story. Oh, and I think someone's uh, having a little situation. So we're gonna go ahead and let them do what they do. Uh, but yeah, so I'm excited to see how that's gonna all come out. Um, what else? Oh, I'm trying to think. Oh, well, it's, it's been a busy time. I mean, it seems like every day something. My God, this morning I ran around. But anyway, it's all good. It's all good. I woke up. I can see. I'm walking. And I'm feeling pretty good. So I'm blessed. Joseph, what do you have to say? Well, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned a couple of things. And thank you for the extra ad lib. Because I had to corral, I should say, collect the dogs that were barking in the backyard. Um, and luckily I hit that mute button at just the right point. Uh, so anyways, um, what you just mentioned, you actually brought it up before I could bring it up. So can you tell our viewers anything about what the new article is gonna be about? Cause you actually have a couple of things that are coming up soon. I'm not gonna tell everybody about everything that I know about what's happening with you. But you have a couple of different things and a couple of different media platforms that are coming out um, with your story. So what are you permitted to discuss? Because some of our viewers at home might like a little heads up ahead of oh, time. Oh, 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 might you be talking about the new Andy Cohen show on the E! Network next month? <laughs> He's doing a review on reality TV 
and I happened to be in it. Well, at least I was in the trailer now. Who knows? Maybe I'm, I might make the cutting room floor for the actual show. But no, they had me in the trailer, which I thought was really, really nice. Uh, and, and I was under the category of inspiring. And I was like, wow, that's great. At least I'm not under the category of sideshow circus freak. <laughs> But yeah, no, 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 I'm playing. But I, I was really, I was, I was really happy. So I'm excited to see, but that's Andy Cohen next month. And um, next week, I'll try and get the information for you as to like the day and time and all of that. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. But then with the Miami Herald, what's going on with that? Well, actually, it's good. It's a nude expose. <laughs> No, no, they just, um, they just wanted me to talk about what me being someone of color means to me, like, like what it means to me um, and how it impacts my life. So that was the gist of it. Uh, and then the photographer that came, honey, he was taking some real good angles. So hopefully they'll pick, they'll pick like the right picture, you know? Anyway. Well, I, I, I'm guessing that there were some really good angles because your um, necklace is a little askew. Yeah, it's a little askew. <laughs> yeah. It's because I have two on. <laughs> <laughs> I better stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having some fun. I'm having some fun with it because... It's such a gift and an honor to have somebody like you and work with somebody like you. Seriously, it is. Um, everything that you do on a regular everyday basis and we know each other personally. Um, and it's just nice to be on the same vibe. Uh, Cause I also did notice a picture of a very handsome man you were with. Oh. <laughs> one of the other trans community members that you were just out with recently traipsing around town. Yeah, Christian. Oh my God. He's such a cutie pie. And he is just beyond a sweetheart. I mean, he just made me feel so special. He paid for dinner, y'all. Oh my God. He paid for dinner. <laughs> Uh, he said he wanted to um, treat me. So I really felt special. It was really, it was good. It was good. I hadn't done well, it in a while. Yeah. No, I know that. And actually it kind of transitions, pun intended, into my first story that you and I discussed. <clears throat> um, it's a little bit of a heavy topic and I'm going to probably cuss a lot because I'm so aggravated with it. But the point is to discuss it because in the LGBTQ plus A community, there are so many different LGBTQA, but there's so many different, it's like a hamburger sandwich. I mean, there's so many different deviations of everything. And I find it, to be honest with you, a little disheartening, but it's up to people like me and you. It's up to us to talk about some of these things. And when we do, hopefully it helps other people think about it in an entertaining way. That's upbeat. That's, that's, but we also all address it and then we can all share it together. So there is a brand new gay campground that is going to be opening up. And I'm not going to say the name of the place because I don't want them to gain anything by me saying the name of the place. That's my first thing. Okay, so it's in the state of Michigan. So it's a gay campground. They will be banning trans men so that the they can manage the atmosphere. Right. Okay. So in other words, there, in, in other words, if you're supposed if you're gonna be a part of that, you have to have a dick. No, you have to have a penis. Okay. Actually, no, you're absolutely correct. It actually says that. And that's a quote from the owner. Wow. Seriously, that is an absolute quote. I didn't, I didn't get the chance to tell you that. Um, so it's kind of interesting that you say that because that's actually a quote from the owner of this place. Um, oh, goodness gracious. Well, then I mean, you, it, it's, you know what, then you have to question, well, wait a minute, what is the motivation? Is it about male camaraderie or is it about a cesspool? 
<laughs> like, you know, like, is it about just getting together uh, to go to Camp Fuck? No, let me stop. Anyway. No, actually, you're absolutely correct. And actually, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, the thing is, is that this would be the very first private, um, privately owned campground that is just for men that were originally born as men and they actually quote penis checks prior to entering the campgrounds so, so you um whip it out you have to like whip it out and say here <laughs> right and then the other part is that your id that you come in with has to be a man's name so uh well, but it's but you know what? The ID thing is tricky because, you know, now trans men, they ch they can change their name and they can also get their gender marker changed. So that's why they're doing the penis check. Okay, but I, I, I get that and understand that, but is this a camp or is it just a fuck fest? Like, if you're going camping, why are you so focused on only having men with a penis with a man's ID? That's so true. Why does it even matter? You're right. That's so true. And that's within our own community. I have a real serious problem with it. I have a huge problem with it. I really do. That's the reason why I'm so fired up about it. It's disgusting. It's atrocious. I hope that nobody goes there. And to be honest with you, if they're saying that they're, this is the first private only membership only all male campground in Michigan, and where friends become family. So let me backtrack. Do you check your family members' penises? Like, because if that's the case, then maybe, maybe, just maybe, um, bow, chicka, wow, wow, bow, chicka, wow, 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 like wrong term kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, why does it matter so much? If the point is to be in a campground and where friends become family, why does it matter so much to exclude and use such harsh wording against another part of our community? It doesn't make a difference what's south of the border. It's up to that one person to tell the other person. Yeah. That's it. So my question for you as a trans family member is what do you think about that? And how do you think that that handsome young man would feel that you were sitting with about this entire topic? All of us have a different journey that we're going on, but I actually have, I, I feel a plight, even though I'm not going on that journey, I feel a plight, I feel oh. motivated. Okay, so, um, okay, so first of all, I, again, I, I think we have to look at like, what is the whole motivation here? Is it about men getting together in camaraderie or like, is this a sexual motivated uh, type of situation? Uh, because trans men are very male. They're very manly. I mean, you know, and, and so, I don't, that's what I'm, I like, that's what really strikes me that they would even say this. Now, I have to say, if it's a private situation, they have a right to let whoever they want in. Um, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't make it right or moral or whatever, but they do have a right to do that. Um, I just don't think that it's about male, male, um, camaraderie and I also feel that whoever's running this thing they have a thing against trans people transgender men so it's it's probably a, the combination um you know of like it being sexually driven and then also their thing about not understanding or not accepting transgender men the same thing happened to us trans women years back with the women's movement uh, when they had the Women's March on Washington, they didn't want trans women there um, because they felt like 
we weren't real women and we didn't represent what they represented. So, I mean, things have gotten way better now. Oh, I think I need an alcohol drink after saying that, right? But, um, and it looks so good too. And I'm not even a drinker, but God, when you drink that beer, it just makes my mouth like get all wet. <laughs> like, like, it makes my mouth get all like, oh, I, it looks so good in that glass too. Anyway, um, I, uh, yeah, yeah, so, so, uh, now if things have changed in regards to that, I mean, it's a little better and all, but uh, I, I, it's kind of like the same thing. <sighs> Again, they'll probably be able to do what they want to do because it's a private club. And I think there's some sort of, oh, someone's in the house. Oh, I'm so excited. Anyway, but they'll probably... Um, yeah, they'll, they'll, I'm sure they'll get flack over it, but again, I think they'll be able to get away with it. So back to you, Joseph. Well, um, I did admit uh, one of our viewers to the Zoom call, but I don't see her, but you can see her? I can see her. Okay, so, she, so she's there. So um, we can segue out of this kind of, we just got started with this topic, but Oh, and then we're, we're, she's gone away. Well, I, is she still, is I think, she still there? I think so, but I don't see her anymore. Okay, so she popped up and then she went away. Maybe she's having some kind of an issue. Oh, no, I see her. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. Well, there we are. Um, Sophie, uh, Sophie, you can unmute your microphone, but also by the same token, uh, we, I can't see you, so take off whatever you have over your camera section, and as soon as we see you pop up, then you can start and join the show. <laughs> uh, so we have one of our viewers who um, is going to be joining the show, and this is going to be something that we're going to be doing on a regular basis. So... As soon as she gets her, her little kinks worked out, which we all know that there's kinks with working with Zoom, that's for sure, with any kind of video or audio stuff. Um, uh, uh, but um, what we're going to be doing is having a different viewer on each of our shows. And I want to welcome anyone at home who watches this show. If you're interested in joining our show, for 10, 15 minutes and sharing a little bit about your own story and your own life, um, then you can join the show. And by the same token, understand that if you answer one right question, the very first time that you're on the show, you are automatically entered into a contest. I haven't figured out the details of that contest yet, but once we have three or four of you that are on the show, then all four of you or three of you are going to be in a contest to answer questions about our previous episodes. Uh, we're, the the pre-qualifier is going to be something very simple that everybody knows about either myself or Raji. Uh, and then we'll have gift cards or, or gifts or gift baskets or cash or whatever. Got to figure all that out. I don't know yet. So, uh, but that's what's going to be happening. So, whenever Sophie figures out how to connect properly, she will pop back up in your box. It sounds kind of perverted saying it that way, popping up in your box. But um, uh, I, I just don't. I just don't like. I don't just don't like the idea that. Okay, so it's it's not a campground. It's not a campground. So let's not call it a campground. Let's just call it a sex club. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. I mean, seriously, it's different zoning. It's different zoning completely. So if, if people want to be like, well, I have this business and this is what it's supposed to be and I can refuse service to you. Okay, fine. If it's a campground, it should be about camping. You don't have to check somebody's penis when you go camping. And if you do, what that tells me that you're a pervert is what it tells me. And even if you're in my own community, which is what this is, then you're a pervert. You don't need to be doing dick measures. Yeah. 
So I don't think it's appropriate for anybody to support or help this business that is quote unquote supposed to be opening up. Now, this is where we go back to like the cancel culture. Um, I hate to cancel something before it starts, especially if, about somebody in our own community, but I think this is some serious bullshit. Oh, I think Sophie's here. <laughs> I think Sophie is here. We'll, we'll see as soon as she pops up. Um, uh, um, and when she does, we'll see her. Uh, let's move on to the next topic. I text messaged you earlier today that I was uh, driving. Oh, there's there's Sophie. We see you, sweethearts. Um, try to keep your camera still. Try to keep your camera still so you don't move around. And you can unmute the microphone and we can introduce you. And by the way, your hair is beautiful. Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Sophie. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So where are you calling from? Where are you, where are you um, videoing from? So um, that's a great question. I don't know where I am right now. <laughs> it's the only quiet place that I could find. So I'm in front of a park, but I have no idea where I am. Hey, but, well, it works. It works. It works. Whatever. <laughs> so I hear you like our... So, um... Yeah. Joseph? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So it went to me. I'm sorry. So I, I didn't realize because my little green box keeps going from place to place a little bit oddly. Maybe it's my internet connection that's a little bit off today. Um, so, but uh, Sophie, first of all, thank you very much for, for watching the show. We greatly appreciate it. And you are the very first um, mega watcher mega viewer um that is one of our regular viewers all the time and we are both very thankful for you so what's the reason why you like to watch our show um you guys go over one a wide range of topics but two you guys are funny <laughs> like unfiltered and you guys are honest and like you guys are just up front and talk about your opinions who cares who's listening who cares who's talking and I don't know I guess I feel like I could be more like that I'm very shy by nature I think you kind of figured that out earlier today so I'm like damn those people are really cool I want to be more like that so I just like listening to you guys oh that's watching. so sweet that's so sweet thank you for that's a big compliment thank you <laughs> things <laughs> well thank you guys for being that <laughs> i know i know well, I'm, I, I, I'm a lot to take sometimes but i appreciate that you take me <laughs> i wouldn't have it any other way <laughs> <laughs> thank you well but you do realize though sophie that part of the reason why people like myself and Raji do what we do is that we do it because we want other people to feel emboldened or feel affirmation or comfortable and see other people that kind of mirror their own life. And by the way, your hair is just so beautiful. I don't know what you did to it because the last time I saw you, it did not look like this. So whoever did your hair did a really good job. So you better, you better, Better do something nice for that. Because we like another like four inches longer since the last time. Thanks. I washed it, so it's thanks to Head and Shoulders, the mega corporation. <laughs> so <laughs> they're the ones that did all the work. I just sat underwater, and this happens. <laughs> so, so what's going on in Sophie Land? Um. Hmm. What is going on in Sophie Land? Uh, I'm a stage manager right now. That's kind of the biggest struggle because most theaters are closed because of COVID. So there's a lot of, I guess, artist withdrawal is the best way I could explain it or describe it because I love theater. It's the one thing that I'm like really passionate about and I love doing. It's a very great community to be a part of, but unfortunately there's a pandemic going on, which 
kind of stops me from doing the thing that I love doing, which is kind of a bummer, but having to create creative solutions, basically, in order to fulfill my artistic need is the funniest thing or cool thing I'm doing right now. Wow. <laughs> that was really long and complicated. Raji, do you have a question? That's not long and complicated at all. And actually, I want to dive more into that topic later. But Raji, do you have a pre-qualifying question that's really easy for Sophie to answer about our show? <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, Sophie, I want to thank you for what you just said, because I wanted to hear more about you and like, you know, really get to know you. And I have to say that you being willing to come on inspires me to keep doing what I do because it's just good to know, like we do these shows every week and it's really good to know that there's people out there that like, you know, appreciate what we do and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So that means a lot to me. And also oh. everything you do is very brave and very awesome. And just what you stand for in general is really cool. So. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, so what we, I mean, I am just like, I'm blushing over here without the blush. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, but it's the sun, so it's fine. We'll just <laughs> cover our cheeks like this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love your nails too. Thank you. <laughs> oh, those are pretty. In I case anybody that. wants to see. Oh my god. They're not real. Yeah. They're very no, thick. So. No, but that <laughs> color is beautiful. I like it. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay. So let's see. What is something that I've shared about my life? that has struck you the most? Like like one thing, you know how I talk about my personal stuff a lot? Mm -hmm. Like, so what is something that's st stuck with you? I'm just, I'm just curious. I, mm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to go through. There's a lot of bullets <laughs> that have hit the mark, but um, I think, and I hope I'm not coming off as rude by no. saying this or, doing this but I guess your story of transitioning and that whole issue I never knew what that was if that makes any sense I grew up very sheltered and I just didn't have any sort of exposure into that sort of world of transitioning and going through that and the steps you had to go through and the horrors that you had to go through with these people and I I didn't even know that that was an option or a thing and I was like wow there's this entire other world of a community that I unintentionally blocked out because I just never was exposed to it and not until watching the show and hearing you and hearing your story and going through that and everything you went through I was like wow that's really cool and that's really brave and fearless is oh. the only other way I can explain it Thank and I'm like, you. I want to be more like that. Oh, you're so sweet. My God, you are good with the ego stroke, and honey. <laughs> you're making me feel really good tonight. Um, yeah, thank you for telling me that. I was just, because like, you know, I wonder sometimes, like, when someone connects with me, what is that thing that has them really connect? So I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, the fact that you weren't exposed to someone like me and now we've connected, that speaks volumes. Because I think one of the things that um, perpetuates discrimination with our community is not, the not knowing and the non-exposure. People that are just ignorant to uh, things about that happen in our community or even, to, even ignorant to the fact that we do exist. So that, that's a wonderful thing. I appreciate you sharing that. Now, yeah, and I think, oh, go ahead. Go ahead I want to hear you. I think it, you. at least with me, because I'm a part of the theater community, you can't step through the door without having a non-hateful bone in your body. So for me, being exposed to you, <laughs> you're nodding in agreement. But yeah, it's impossible for you to walk through the door without beating somebody that is every single walk of life and everything different. And then hearing about you and learning about you and watching the show and hearing your story, I learned a completely different side. And I was like, oh, wow, like, that's awesome. That's cool. So yeah. your theater, your, your, um, what are you, you all working on next as far as like production wise? Uh, right now, 
we are working on uh, Legally Blonde. It's in oh. the Seminole Theater right oh. now in Homestead in Miami. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're working on that. Everything is going through Zoom and all that stuff. So we're just kind of waiting for everything to be open and being allowed. But that's what we're going through. Well, you and I are two creative spirits because I'm, I'm really creative too. So I can appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. Now, Joseph, what do you have to say to Missy Miss? <laughs> well, first of all, thank you, Sophie. And um, because you answered that question correctly, you are, first of all, our virgin um, mega viewer, and you are entered into the contest. At some point in time, we will be having two or three mega viewers um, on the show, and everyone will have to answer some questions. Um, so I'm going to suggest to you that you brush up on the previous episodes, because you got a really easy question from Raji this time. So that enters you into the contest. Yay. But next time, it's going to be multiple questions, and there's going to be other viewers just like you uh, at home. And we're going to, I'm going to figure out, I don't know, I got to, I'm going to work on this and make it work creatively, some kind of a gift card, cash, gifts, or something. We'll figure out what to do between myself and Raji. The two of us will put our thoughts in a blender and hit the button and we'll come up with something. So you are entered officially now. Yay, so my competition is to watching the me contest right now to win something. <laughs> awesome. Who is? That means my competition must be watching me right now. <laughs> Oops. Well, not right this moment, not right this moment, <laughs> but they will be watching it tomorrow. That's for sure. Um, and uh, 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 probably for the next two months, they'll be watching it. That's for sure. So thank you very much for joining the show, Sophie. Raji, do you have anything to say before we let Sophie go? Because I know she's very busy and she's got a lot of stuff going on and I don't want to take up too much of her time. And I know that she's looking to her, her, to her right at a very handsome man uh, that I know. And I'm not going to say where they're from, but I see him on a regular basis. Oh, so Sophie's got the handsome man by her side. Well, you're a girl after my own heart, honey. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing a little with us. Um, and, you know, you're, I think you're beautiful. You have a beautiful spirit. And also physically, you're beautiful. I love your cheekbones. Um, Thanks, I got so it from pretty. my mom. Yeah, I love your cheekbones. Yeah. So anyway, on that note, I, I just want to wish you love, um, you know, happiness, peace, good health, prosperity, and many wonderful blessings, Sophie. And maybe you can join us again, you know, in the future. For sure. I This is a big first for me. <laughs> I'm very shy by nature and I'm very reserved. So the fact that I'm in front of people right now is a lot and very big for me. So thank you guys for letting me do that. And helping me out with that at least <laughs> oh sure so sure. you know you're well to, out girl don't even try it <laughs> i'm trying <laughs> and actually to be honest to be honest with you sophie i know that you were kind of a little stressed about this before we started the show you did a great job and you are a natural in front of the camera and you look beautiful and you speak eloquently and there's nobody that can stop you from doing anything in your life except you. So you have to keep pushing yourself forward. And when you don't get comfortable, push even harder to do what you actually want to do. And you never know what's going to happen. No one does ever. So thank you very much. It is my blessing as well as Raji's to have you on the show. And we're so very thankful that you took the time out of your day to join us. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. And thank you so much, Sophie. As well. <laughs> Bye, Bye, guys. Sophie. Bye. Bye, Sophie. Bye. All right. Bye. Don't forget to hit the mute button. Okay, good. I don't know. 
Um, so that was fun. Oh, it was so much. That fun. was a lot of fun. Man. Oh my god, I can't wait to we we're gonna I want to do it every single week. And that's it's gonna be our new thing. We're it's gonna be and I got a list of probably 50 or 60 people that watch the show. Which I didn't even realize. I didn't even realize that we had that many people that watch the show on a regular basis. So I think it would be fun for us to to bring them on and engage with them and learn something new about each person. I absolutely love it. I, I, I mean, I just, it was, and she was such a sweetheart. Um, yeah, we need to do this. I think it's a, a, it'll be a nice addition to the show. Okay, so if anyone is interested, they can join the show. I guess I'm gonna have to create a new email, but until I do, I'll probably say join the show at mysouthernexplosure.site, but it's gonna be, Raji at mysouthernexplosure.site or Joseph at mysouthernexplosure.site. Um, if you're interested in advertising, please do not forget because we are looking for good companies to help promote locally here in South Florida, all across the entire United States, all across the world. Then I know of a certain person, I'm not going to say who, but that they just found out about a whole bunch of people in another country that follow them. And they didn't even know until the person told them that everyone talks about them. What country was that? And who, I, I don't know who to call. Shout, shout out to Brazil. Oh my God, I, I, I didn't realize. I mean, ever since I went on reality TV, um, I get messages from people all around the world. I mean, Australia, South America, Europe, Africa, India. I mean, but I noticed that I would get a lot of messages from Brazil. Well, recently my um, co-host, one of my co-hosts, Ella Marquise, who is Portuguese, um, she's from Portugal, I should say. Um, and she uh, is actually on the show, on my other show that I do, Trans Gurus, she was telling me that she has a girlfriend who is Brazilian. And she went to Brazil and she told her that everyone knows me in Brazil for whatever reason. She said that everyone she brought my name up to knew who I was. And she said that they just love me. They just love me over there. So I was like, what, Brazil? I'm like, oh, okay. So yeah, I had to definitely give a shout out to Brazil and thank them for you know for all the love and support. The Is there anything going on with Trans Gurus or your other acti other activities that you're doing now for the community that people need to know about? Because I want to get a little bit of a heads up ahead of time instead of finding out after the fact. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's always things happening with me. So you know, like from day to day, things, new things are, are manifesting. But, you know, I am with Trans Social. Um, I'm doing outreach uh, work for them. They're a wonderful grassroots transgender organization led by trans for trans. And um, I, uh, I've been an outreach advocate for the last few months with them. So it's been wonderful. Um, we're focusing on our transgender community here in South Florida. And, uh, you know, uh, they got a, a grant. So uh, we're, when I say they, meaning the, the um, heads, uh, the directors. And so what's going on now is we're able to provide resources like gift cards for groceries, um, help with utility bills. Uh, we also do a name change assistance, um, HRT, um, uh, paying the um, co-pay for three months for HRT, which, uh, which would be the um, hormone replacement therapy. Uh, so a lot of great things happening with TransSocial. I'm a busy, I'm a busy bee. <laughs> and I don't mean B-I-T-C-H, I mean, <laughs> I mean, B-E-E-B. -E -E -E. <laughs> no, I know. I definitely do. That's for sure. I mean, I've been a busy bee 
working at a local gas station and helping them um, with things that are necessary to be done because I can work there safely over the last couple of weeks. You know this, Raji. Yeah. Uh, I've sent you lots of photos and the owners have intentions, the owners of that gas station, I won't say the name of it because it doesn't really matter um, unless they're going to be paying for advertising. Then I will, then I will mention it. <laughs> Oh, by the way, if you happen to watch this in Nebraska, because I do post these videos in Nebraska, and you are one of the owners of this gas station, then please make certain to contact me at advertise at mysouthernexposure.site. That's advertise at mysouthernexposure.site. So we can set up a advertising campaign for you. And I have a lot of really great ideas that might help you because you're planning on opening 10 locations in South Florida. So that's what I've been basically doing for the last couple of weeks is doing a lot of physical manual labor, fingers cuts, doing stuff um, that I usually do not, well, I have not been able to do, but I can do it safely. Um, that's basically what I've been focusing on over the last couple of weeks um personally but i do want to bring up a topic or a story and i'm going to bring it up in a really kind of friendly non-confrontational way um but it's important because we're talking about this is black history month we only have a couple of days left also as well and there's also a lot of people that don't really understand things as much as others. So this is a topic and we can keep this light and airy, Raji, because I know you and I have discussed this earlier before for different reasons. Um, in the brutal world of bare knuckle boxing, a fight more than 200 years ago between a freed American slave and a Bristol born boxer remains one of the most controversial and bloody battles in boxing history. The Black Diamond, Crib, and Tom, the Moor, Molyneux, were the first ever world championship fights. So uh, a lot of people don't understand that boxing started from slavery. This is something that anyone can pull up. So this freed slave, only became freed because he won the very first world boxing championship fight 200 years ago it's you have to google it and pull it up yourself because i want people to find their own information but i want to spark that interest so that people can look into it on their own and they can decide how they feel positive or negative about it yeah. i know a lot of people that that like boxing or MMA and everything else like that, which I respect that. Um, but I think that there's some fine tuning with it to make it less violent and less bloody. Uh, personally, that's just my perspective. Um, so, but to know that the very first fight was, and this is, I believe, a rendering of the very first fight. Right there, that's not the Last Supper, by the way. That image is not the Last Supper. So um, that's just the image that was available from the search that I did, because I've been doing a lot of black history searches over the last you know, 30 days or so. I do it all the time, clearly, because I'm a person of color. So, but um, what do you think about the whole boxing thing starting from with boxing, that it started from that? And no one's really talked about it. What do you think about that? I mean, it it is amazing and also appalling that a lot of history has been ha, has been swept under the carpet for lack of a better phrase. I never knew that. I never knew about that. You know, you talking saying it, it kind of sounded familiar maybe i heard something years ago but like i wasn't like I, I didn't really key into it but really for the most part i don't think many people know that story and know the history and um you know i just think that it's great that you brought this up i think that history needs to be talked about um all sorts of history you know and and not 
and the real history, you know, like the reality uh, or the authentic, the authentic history, not bullshit or like, you know, things that are like um, sugarcoated for lack of a better phrase, uh, but like the raw history and what went, what took place. I think for a lot of groups of people that were just what I would say were, they were disenfranchised, they were uh, considered less than, they were enslaved, uh, whatever it may have been, uh, their history wasn't like acknowledged, like it wasn't considered important to acknowledge and to, and to cultivate so like even here in America, I think maybe it's changed now, but I remember when I went to school, slavery was not taught in school. It was just kind of brushed over a little bit, but like they did not dive into the reality. And that was uh, in order to like diminish it, like, you know, and like kind of sugarcoat the history. So, um, we all have a history individually, all groups have a history, different types of ethnic groups and communities. And so I think it's just a wonderful thing and um, did not, had no idea about it, hadn't had no idea about it. And it, oh, and the interesting thing is that he won his freedom. I mean, that's amazing. I wonder how many, after that, how many like uh, African-American people fought for their freedom that way? Like if it became a thing, you know, like after um, the one, the first time, and then they just started, you know, having fights and saying, well, if you want to win your, your freedom, uh, you know, get in this fight. So I wonder. Actually, that's the reason, that's part of the reason why I brought up the topic, because I'm curious about that. I'm going to have to look into it. Um, I do want to make comment about another story that we, that I, I should say, another topic that we brought up uh, uh, on our last show. And I think I text messaged you about it. I don't think that I discussed it yet because I was getting ready to get into it. And then Sophie uh, checked in. But the last show that we had, I talked about the city of Fort Lauderdale, Wilton Drive, from, from north of the high school, over to Five Points, and then from 13th, going east, uh, west uh, on 13th to 4th Avenue, about how the lights run all the time, that I'm going to start looking into what the story is with that, because it's been like that for over a year. Ironically, just today, Miraculously, those lights were all off. I mean, you know, I tell you, after we did the show last week, I was driving through Wilton Manors and I, I noticed the lights on because I used to not notice it until you brought it up. And so I looked and I saw the lights on, but then when you text me today to tell me that you noticed they had been turned off, I was like, Wow, is someone that, you know, someone that's connected to City Hall, Wilton Manor City Hall watching our show? Like, what's going on here? Well, I mean, the thing is, is that I think it's good that we brought up the topic. And then I, I think it's rather clear because there are several Wilton Manor groups that we participate in and we post our show and I've gotten some really good feedback. I haven't shared it with you yet from some of the some of the um, administrators of those other groups, and I will. Um, and they're very thankful, by the way. Some of the, the administrators are very thankful about what we do for the community, and they will be participating in a more um, vocal way at some point in time. And some people started the groups, and now they live in other areas. So, but. It, it, it's clear that part of what we're doing is directly impacting our community, but also other communities across the United States, which is good. That's the whole point of what we're doing, I think. Um, so, but uh, I, I thought it was pretty, 
pretty funny and kind of entertaining. I had to chuckle a little bit. I'm like, yes, one down, one down, one to go. Because then I have the I have another issue with Wilton Manors and Fort Lauderdale um, um, to discuss and bring up on another episode. Uh, if 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 your if your eyes acting up, it's okay to say that we need to cut the show. I'm okay with that because you were kind of rubbing it if, if it's acting up. Oh, I have lashes on, honey, today. Oh, okay. It's just that's just a that's just a hair and makeup thing, then. Okay, so um, I what I so I, I had my photo shoot, so I wore lashes today. I don't wear them every day, and and you know I used to. Funny enough, I used to wear them every day, and then I got out of the habit of doing it. And I think this might be the first time since I've done the show that I, I since I've been doing the show that I. I wore lashes, but yeah, it's it just so it's because I had the photo shoot just before we started the show. But anyway, mm -hmm. well, you know that's what it's like when you're glamorous. So that's what happens. <laughs> but but what well, you know, I think we're gonna wrap it up soon. Anyway, I mean, you probably have like one or two more topics, right? And then yes, yeah, no, we're we're almost done anyways. But I just wanted to say if if, if it's acting up too much, just let me know so I can just finish it. But the other thing is that I wanted to bring up with Wilton Manor specifically, and also Fort Lauderdale, is that in some school zones, they have speed traps. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with that term speed trap, but there are speed traps. So I want to put this out there so that you and Wilton Manors, now that I know that you're listening and paying attention, and also in Fort Lauderdale, I'm paying attention, and I will be videotaping and proving that things are not working properly. Um, in sc some school zone areas, they you can clearly see a sign that tells you the time of the school zone. Mm -hmm. And in some areas, the sign has plants that have grown over in front of it, so you can't see it. Wow. And it's it's not like you can you can like cut the tree down as you're driving. And then the second thing is. Oftentimes, it, I have four different points in the city that I've noted, and I will be recording and photographing and documenting and uploading and also suing Fort Lauderdale as well as Wilton Manors about this issue because either you want to keep the kids safe or you want to create a speed trap so that you can make money off of the tickets. If your intention is that you want to keep the kids safe, then signage should be clearly visible and easy to see. Right. There should be no confusion with that. So it's either it, it's it's either you want to keep the kids safe or you want the cops to be able to make money. So then that way you can go ahead and pay for the uh, uh, light posts that are on that are not necessary. What do you think? Have you ever gotten a speed ticket in a speed trap before? You're familiar with that term? Yeah, no, I, I know. I am familiar with it. Um, not recently, maybe years ago. Like, like I'm talking like probably in the 90s. Um, yeah, pro probably in the 90s, but not recently. Um, but I know they do that. They do that where, like, it's almost like a setup. You know, like, it, it's a... Uh, uh, like they they know people are gonna to do it and because the signs are hidden you're not you're not aware so it's like but then they can say to you oh but no there's signs there like even though they're hidden you know but no the signs are there so yeah yeah definitely I don't think it's right I think it's just the city wanting to make money and they have their quotas and all of that you know so that's why everyone out there, we have to drive carefully. I swear, I drive like an old lady, y'all. I am very, very, I mean, I drive like an old lady. But, you know, some of these people, you do too, Joseph, right? Um, but some of these people on the road, they drive like they think they're invincible. Like, they, they, like, you know, like, oh, like, I mean, it's ridiculous. And you're like, where are you rushing to? I mean, I get people have places to go. I have places to go. But what I'm saying is, 
is it worth your life? And what cracks me up is the one that zooms by you, right? And then you two end up at the light together, right next to the guy. Hi, <laughs> you zoomed by me at 90 freaking miles an hour. And then we end up at the same light together, really? And actually that's that's my favorite that's my favorite when they do that because i usually pull i put the window down mm -hmm. I, I mean i'm sorry but i do i'm like hey buddy how's it going <laughs> and i put the window back up well the thing because i mean you know because this is the thing when an accident happens then they want to all be sorry and pitiful and oh i'm sorry and, but no but you were driving like a bat out of freaking hell I mean, come on. And I know accidents happen anyway. I mean, that's life. But a lot of these accidents could be prevented if people were more conscientious about the way they did their driving. No, I agree. I completely agree. And actually, I contacted one of the people in uh, the city management just recently so that they would do a survey on my block because mm -hmm. I'm talking, I mean, I'm talking about like school buses going 40 miles an hour when they're empty. Parents, when they're dropping their kids off, 40 miles an hour after they get done dropping their kid off. Um, cop cars, taxi cabs, um, all of that. And this is not a main street. This is like a 25 mile an hour zone. And I contacted, I'm not going to say who I contacted, but someone who will fix this. And they're going to be doing a survey off of three blocks, like a six block radius. They're going to be doing a survey. And I think it's necessary because it's just a matter of time before somebody who that we know in our block is backing out their driveway and gets killed. Because these cars are going 40 miles an hour, maybe sometimes even 50. Like sometimes I'll be sitting here and be like, what was that? And then you see just a, a blur that goes by the window. If it's a blur going by the window, Let me you're going you, way too fast. They are, especially for a residential area. Let me tell you, I was on I-95. It was back in 2009. And I was driving, I mean, reasonable like probably 55 maybe 60 coming off of i-95 and it had been raining it had been raining i'm slowing down now i'm probably going about 40 35 and i'm coming to a light press on the gas i press on the brake and the car is not stopping okay at 35 miles an hour, even maybe less than, a little less than that, between 40 and 30 miles an hour, my car hydroplane, okay? And loss, when your car hydroplanes, believe me, you will lose total control over it. it and so I had a truck in front of me and I'm, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And I'm like pumping on the, 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 the brakes and it's, it's not stopping. So I then swerved off to the shoulder thinking, okay, maybe like if I keep pumping, it'll give me more time. It would not stop. Slammed into one of those tall light beams on I-95. The light beam comes crashing down on my car. Okay, thank God I had my seatbelt on so I didn't go through the window. And, you know, overall I was okay. But that's to show you, like you don't have to go super fast to get in a fucked up accident. So these people riding at like 90 and 100 miles per hour, and you know what it is? That Yeah, I get you have places to go, but that's a fucking ego trip. That's an ego trip. It's like they, they have their balls in their hands even <laughs> no because really it's like and you know it's like like um, i get it people like the um oh what's it called like the uh the adventure of it 
you know, like Zoom, we're going riding. Oh yeah, way like little, like little kids, you know, like and I and I get it, you know, oh you're riding fast and like the um the adrenaline, you know, like you're you're 95 and you're going 90, and it's like this adrenaline rush. I get all of that, but guess what? When you're six feet under, <laughs> have fun with the adrenaline rush. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, so I, it, it just pisses me off because those are the same fucking, I'm sorry, those are the same uh, freaking people that will kill someone in a car crash and walk away without a scratch. Well, actually, it's kind of ironic that you bring up that story. I haven't shared this before on the show, and I don't even know if I even told you about this, but my aunt and her two daughters died in a car accident uh, on 595. And when I see people driving recklessly, it makes my brain automatically go back to that moment. I wasn't there, I didn't see it, but I feel it every single day. And it was someone else doing crazy behavior, making bad decisions that took my family members away from me. And when I see something like that, it just makes me automatically go back there let to me, that point. Let me ask you, Joseph, did that person go to jail? I don't remember the details, to be honest with you. And I, to be honest also as well, I kind of tried to block it out. Um, so it's not something that I wanna like get into just like with my brother being murdered in my mother's driveway. I don't really want to talk about it too much or look into it too much. It's just easier for me to just push it away, which isn't necessarily healthy, yeah. but, um, it's, but it doesn't discount the fact of the reason why I'm afraid of guns is because of what happened to my brother. The reason why I don't like people who drive recklessly is because of what happened to my aunt and my my cousins yeah. uh so it's one of those things where when i see behavior that is reckless and jeopardizes other people's lives i can't not say something about it which actually brings us to our last topic um which is kind of a heavy topic but it, we're, i'm going to try to make it as light as possible today we are getting to the 500,000 deaths mark in the united states of america for covid which is a very grim number it's not a milestone because i've heard it referred to as a milestone and milestones are usually something that's good this is a grim number it's not a milestone so uh the reality is that we are stuck with this problem and most of it or all of it is due to the previous administration not doing anything at all and now we're stuck fixing it now. And it's going to take a long time before we get a handle on it. And it's not going to go away. And people just need to put on a mask. I mean, seriously, just put on a mask. I'm sick of all the Karens and Darrens who are like, well, I can still get it if I, ha if I, if I have the mask on. Yes, but it diminishes the likelihood of you transmitting it by 50% or 60%. And if you put two masks on, it diminishes it by an additional 20%. So if you have, at least that helps. Uh, the, the fact is in the state of Florida, the numbers are horrible. The COVID testing is going down because vaccinations are going up. So, so it's kind of a little bit of a, it's like the COVID vaccinations are going up but the testing is going down, but the death rate per vaccinations, I should say the death rate per cases is going higher. 
So that's that's where you have to seriously look into those numbers and see. Just because more people are getting vaccinated doesn't mean that it goes away. Yeah, it's because there's less people being tested that the numbers are coming down because more people are getting vaccinated. But the death rate is not changing. The death rate is the same. So at some point, we're going to get to like a 50 percent death rate is what's probably going to happen. And that's a crazy number. I projected we're going to get to 90 percent before things improve. If you remember on one of our previous episodes, yeah, I said that I project we're going to get to 90 percent death rate before things start to turn around. And if people pay attention to the other shows that I've been on, I'm not gonna say the other shows. Um, I apologize. My dog is having a nightmare. So you're gonna hear her cry every once in a while in the background. I might have to put my, my microphone on mute temporarily so I can rub her tummy um, and then she'll calm down and I'll give her a kiss. Um, but your poor, uh, your poor dog. Last week she thought she was pregnant. Now she's having a nightmare. Anyway. Oh, good lord! My dog, our dog. I should say our dog is. She's more than a handful. Jesus, Lord, she's the size of a human being. You know what she looks like. I know. Oh my goodness gracious! And then she gets mad at me for simple stuff. But um, uh, it's good to add a little humor with that. But I, 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 I don't see a way for things to get better currently until things get worse and i'm looking forward to things improving knowing that they will but i don't think that it's going to improve sooner than my original idea of three years i originally said a year ago it's going to take three years for us to get a handle on it and i think actually my numbers were right um, but these numbers are really, really scary. That's the reason why I, I don't, I'm not around anybody at all, at all, even including yourself. We have very limited interaction, the two of us. I know. Um, and I'm a, I don't want to get sick. I don't want to not get sick, but bring it home and then make my partner or his mother sick or my dogs, because apparently it transfers uh, to dogs as well as cats and everything else. And then we got this brand new avian flu thing that just came out. I don't know if you know about this. Now, apparently the avian flu is transferable to people. It just came out off the press, off the AP wire. Oh my God. We're gonna be walking around in plastic bubbles. Oh my God. We really are. But you know what the good thing is, though, that now we actually have a leader who tonight, it might be happening right now while we're talking, that he is doing a vigil um, to honor the people who have died. They, they put flags in the ground over at the state capitol. Joseph R. Biden and Kamala D. Harris are doing a special honoring tonight which I think it is great to see that. It's the second one that they've done in less than two months. Um, so, but that's my perspective with that. Uh, what do you have to say about the whole COVID stuff? Hmm. <laughs> oh boy, um, I don't know. I, you know, I just, I keep trying to stay optimistic. I really do. Um, I don't know. When you said three years, I'm thinking three years. I hope not. But at this point, I'm thinking not until next year. Like, I'm hoping like the beginning of next year, uh, January in that range of 2022. Um, But again, I mean, they keep pushing it back because they were saying the spring then they said the summer, fall. Now they're saying like December, Christmas, holiday time. I mean, I, I don't know. I, it, it's just one of those things and, and we're in it. We're in it. So we just have to deal with it, try our best to you know, be careful and move forward. But three years, I hope not. Oh dear Lord, three years. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
I'm really good at figuring stuff out, Raj. I know you're 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 massaging your head because this is some heavy thought and it's stressful. No, no, um, I mean, it's no. I could I could talk about heavy stressful stuff. I can handle it. I'm a big girl, but no. Um, I. I <laughs> but no, I um, I. Okay, so what I'm noticing is that the numbers as far as hospitalizations have have been declining. So that is like a good sign to me. That's why I'm saying like, I don't know if it's gonna be three years. I'm hoping like, you know, maybe a year from now, I uh, will be back to like somewhat normal. Like, I don't know if it'll ever be back to the way it was, but you know, somewhat uh, like we were what we were used to so anyway that's all i really have to say all right so um the next thing that i was going to mention apparently i forgot and um it was kind of important so sometimes that's what happens <laughs> When you have a half of a beer on a show, sometimes that's what happens. Um, there's a lot more to discuss. I want to talk about our butterfly garden. I want to talk about Ricky's Corner. I want to talk about the health and beauty stuff that's planned. I want to talk about uh, doing some DIY projects. I want to remind people to go directly to my Southern Exposure Media Group llc.com you can subscribe for only four dollars and 99 cents a month and you can get lots of our shows original content like for myself and other individuals i'm going to be putting some more stuff up there uh just for yourself and other people who want to join us if you're interested in working for us it's work at my southern exposure site that's work at my southern exposure site um and if you want to get a hold of Raji, that's Raji at my Salon Exposure that site. Right. If you want to get a hold of me, Joseph at my Salon Exposure that site. All I'm gonna say at this point is I hope you all have a good night. And I want to thank you all for watching our show. Don't forget to like, save, share, and most importantly, go directly to my southern I'm going to leave it to Raji to say good night. Well, thank you so much for tuning in again. I hope you all enjoyed the show. I'm looking forward to our next guest, whoever that will be. Uh, hopefully next week we'll have company again and I'll be in a sandwich again. Or either we'll put Joseph in a sandwich, one or the other. Um, and. Uh, and on that note, I just want to wish everyone a great week. Take a little time to, <laughs> to eat something delicious. Because you know, I'm a foodie, y'all. Oh, my God. I think I'm going to go make some Caribbean lime shrimp from Margaritaville. Oh, and that reminds me, Joseph, I got to send you the re recipe for my, um, my aloo, my curry aloo, but my curry potato. So I'll do that. Um, but yeah, on that note, I want to wish everyone love, happiness, peace, good health, prosperity, and many wonderful blessings. Bye. Namaste. Don't forget to send me that recipe. Now you're caught on tape saying that you're going to send me that recipe because it's I'm been a whole week. I've been asking for it. So I forget. now you're on the hook for it. You, you got to send it because now you got people that are going to be following up on it. Because that photo of that curry looks so good. Mm, yummy, yummy. It looked, it looked half as delicious as you. Oh, see, there it goes again, y'all. He knows what gets me going. <laughs> he knows how to get me going. <laughs> Thank you all. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to watch and sh share this video as much as possible. Thank you so much. That's right. Share me. It's a, it's a lot of me to go around, y'all. Come on, you can share me all around the world. <laughs> Brazil too. <laughs>